Hello and welcome to another full build video. This time we are building an awesome early attack helicopter, the AH-1G Cobra in 170 second scale from Special Hobby. But before we start building, let me present you the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for you to choose from and develop new skills, hone your existing arsenal or just explore for something new to capture your imagination. On the platform you can find everything from photography and web development to business analytics and productivity classes. My personal favorite so far is the fundamentals of DSLR photography by Justin Bridges. The way that he explains how to balance the exposure triangle is super easy to understand and I'm sure this class will help me to improve the quality of my scale modeling photography. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. Now let's get back to the build. On this one I'm going to follow the instructions. So after the mandatory cleanup I had to install a few details inside the fuselage. And talking about the instructions they are pretty nicely done. A big departure from what I had to deal with in my Yak-23 build. The fit so far is so-so. The turbine exhaust was not in the mood to cooperate. Moving on to the cockpit, the rear bulkhead is to be removed and replaced with another part. So using a alpha scriber I made a deep groove which was enough to allow me to snap the part off. After some tidying up I glued the replacement part on. The only other assembly I will do now are the seats. They consist of the actual seat and one armor plate on each side. And probably the only addition I'm going to make are those uber simple seat belts. They are made from masking tape and will get the job done. Of looking like seat belts, of course, not holding up somebody in a crash. I'm going to go through the trouble of masking the transparent parts from the inside as well as the outside. If you are interested in more details on masking canopies, I will leave a link in the description. But first, watch this video until the end. All the small details like the control levers and such, I will super glue to cocktail sticks for easier painting. As usual, the painting begins with a good layer of surface primer. In this application, I'm using Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. It will serve as the base color for some parts, like the control levers and the exterior of the canopy frames. Ok, now let's start applying the base color. I will try to do some marbling, but here the space is very little and not really suitable for such effect. With some success the marbling is applied. Next come a few light layers of the base color for blending purposes. Most of the internal frames of the canopy get the same base color. This time I will not bother with the marbling as there is no point in doing that. The medium sea gray will be the base color for the seats too. The reference pictures I have suggest yellow internal frames of the canopy hatches. 
so yeah how it is. The seat cushions I will brush paint with olive drop acrylic paint, carefully avoiding the grey surfaces. The same color I will use on the padding of the rear bulkhead. A few panels on the side consoles will get black paint. The final base color will be for the seat belts. There are different color belts judging by the pictures I found on the interwebs. So this color may be wrong. Now let's start giving the details some volume by applying fake shadows. For the parts I painted in grey I will use black wash. For larger scales I would prefer dark grey wash. But in 1 to 7 second I won't contrast hence the black wash. On the olive drop I use dark green wash. While the washes are drying I will employ the Giga Awesome technique of dry brushing. Using dark grey acrylic paint I will pick up the raised details and angles of the instrument panel and their shrouds. The instrument panels look pretty neat for the scale. To remove the excess wash I will use a Q-tip for the larger surfaces and a micro brush for the tighter areas. I will try to remove all the wash around the corners as my goal is to make the impression of a shadow and not dirt accumulation. Alright, after the shadows come the highlights. Here we may say that I overdo things using such light color, but have in mind that we are looking at this under very high magnification. In reality, things are spot on, if I may say so myself. In order to get very fine line exactly on the edges, I am not using the tip of the brush. Instead, I am using the side of the tip. Also, I unloaded the majority of the paint from the brush drawing lines on my gloves. The edges of the seat cushions are much softer and we will need to apply the highlights accordingly. Aiming at a soft transition. On the rear bulkhead, I picked out each individual diamond shape. To simulate some distressed paint, I will employ the sponge chipping technique, another grey acrylic paint. I try to do that on high traffic areas and corners where the paint can be chipped and rubbed off. On the access hatches I started again with sponge chipping with lighter yellow, but then connected some of the chips with fine brush. Then I added some of the dark grey paint in a few areas. To finish the rear bulkhead and the seat cushions I am applying acrylic matte varnish. This will unify the sheen of the different steps and will be more adequate for fabric representation. The final step will be to add more context to the model. I will be using a filter for 3 tone camo to simulate dirt accumulation. I think this color nicely resembles the dirt from Vietnam helipads and so on. While the filler dries, I will add some CA glue to the instrument faces. Although we don't have any dial details, it will break the uniform surface. Also, I will apply some red paint here and there and will highlight the knobs using silver watercolor pencil. After the filler had some time to dry, I will blend it with a micro brush. I could do some real blending with brush and mineral spirits, but I don't see the necessity here. Alright! It's finally time to start assembling the cockpit. Some things here fit better than others, but in general it's not a bad experience. 
Also, I think that the cockpit is pretty well detailed for a 1 to 70 second scale kit. Now that the cockpit is complete, we can start the assembly of the model. The design of the model allows the cockpit to be inserted while the two fuselage halves are together. This allows to glue the cockpit to one side of the fuselage while it's securely sandwiched between the two halves. One of the issues I have with this kit is that the rotors has to be glued in place, which prevents it from spinning. The fuselage halves join together really nicely. In fact, the amount of putty I used in this build was negligible and mostly due to user error. One of the other issues was the tail to tail boom joint which was pretty loose. I managed to place it properly, but it could have been better. I will not be installing any more parts until I finish cleaning up the seams and restoring the panel lines lost in the process. This way I won't have to worry about breaking anything. The raised panels on the belly of the helicopter are pain to sand around and not destroying them. The best route would be to replace those with photo etch or sheet plastic parts. But to keep the out of the box nature of this build, I will work with what I have. Now that all the seams are taken care of, we can proceed to add the fiddly bits. Most of the details require some extra work before they can be fit properly. Probably due to the manufacturing process, most if not all of the parts have mold lines running along the contact surfaces. I guess that this mold making technique is better for the surface details, but dealing with so many mold lines is pretty annoying. On the positive note, all the hard prep work pays off when it comes the time to install the part. One other area where some extra work needs to be done is the joint between the skids and the fuselage. Tight fit is essential, but untreated the skids just can't get inside the location holes of the fuselage. The armament is another place where details are very well done, but the fit and the engineering of some of the parts is questionable. Once again, this might be due to the limitations of injection molding. Although the instructions do not call for weight being put in the nose of the aircraft, this kit is obviously a tail sitter. To fix that, I will fill the chin turret with lead and PVA glue. Fingers crossed this will be enough as I will install the turret pretty much at the end of this build. The canopy is a 5 piece deal and needs extra extra care when installed. The location tabs on the central piece allow for some movement and the tabs for the side windows are very very faint. So here we need every bit of precision we have left in our hands. I usually use quick setting plastic cement for the canopies, but have in mind that the chances of ruining the transparent parts are pretty substantial. After a few coats of Mr. Surfacer 1200 grey primer, I will paint some areas that call for a black paint. The black areas will be masked afterwards. The rotor blades will need some marbling as their surface is quite large and monotonous. Marbling is a great exercise for airbrush control in my opinion. After the marbling is done, a few light blending layers will be enough for now. 
for the camouflage I will start with pure olive drop on the tail, employing marbling and blending layers. If we can call this the opposite of black basing, let's say light basing, it has some cool properties. Marbling works well at least for the darker colors. Also here we can play around with saturation of the colors by changing the opacity, like doing the pulse shading on the panel lines just by applying a few more layers of the same paint. The camouflage scheme I have chosen represents an aircraft with nicely faded fuselage and freshly painted tail, maybe changed at some point. So to create the faded appearance of the olive drop I added some buff color to it. I cannot tell you the mixing ratios because I mixed everything in the paint cup of the airbrush until the desired color is reached. So there are no mixing ratios to speak of. For the surfaces that are most exposed to the sun I added some more buff to the mixture. On the contrary, for the surfaces that see most shade I added pure olive drop to the mixture. In both cases I tried to apply the paint in an even fashion in order to keep the tonal variation. The same darker mixture we are going to use for post shading purposes. Again this might look too much right now. But after the rest of the weathering it should look just about right. I hope so. Another cool feature of our camo scheme is the shark mount. The instructions want us to paint the area covered by the decal with red. Maybe the decals are a bit transparent and if that's the case I want to do some weathering and variation right now. How to make your own custom stencils you can learn in my tutorial, I will put a link for it in the description. After a quick masking effort, black paint will be applied on the walkways and two lines on the engine access panels. Here I will also bleach the base color a little bit to give the impression of a sun fade. The rotor hubs will be painted in medium sea grey. The tips of the rotor blades are going to be yellow. The gold old dry brushing will give us awesome definition of the details on the hub. Now let's add some bare metal chipping, but just a little bit. This effect can overpower everything else very easily. For me the watercolor pencil is a great tool for such effects but it needs a good matte surface to work properly. To 
to protect and prepare for decals, I applied a coat of gloss varnish. The decals are a bit strange, very thin but hard, which makes them quite brittle, especially the large shark mouth decals. They were quite tricky to place. On each side there is a hole that needs to fit over a detail on the fuselage. However, the holes on the decals are not actual holes, but rather a non-printed areas. So cutouts need to be created before dipping the decal in the water. After quite some fiddling around with brushes and softening solutions, the shark mount is somewhat properly in position. There are also quite a few stencil decals, but I'm not going to bother you with the tedious installation process. Now let's do some more weathering. Using black wash I'm going to outline the raised panels. Just like in the cockpit I want to create shadows, so the amount of wash should be very restrained. To put an accent on the edges of the raised panels, I will dry brush some buff oil paint. Here the brush should be practically empty, if that can be a correct term. But you know what I mean. The same oil paint I will use to create even more fade in the paint. This time I will put some on the tail too. It was not painted yesterday after all. And we should not forget about the shark mouth, as it is too nice and shiny right now. Another protective layer. This time, flat coat on the fuselage and a semi gloss for the tail. Now let's put the whole model into the context of the Vietnam environment. Using the same filter as in the cockpit, I will apply dirt stains on the heavy traffic areas as well as on the belly of the helicopter. On the sides I will do some streaking on the lower third and some more staining on the skids. The filter dries flat so there is no need for further varnishing. It is finally time to put everything together. Using CA glue I will put the ordinance in position, including the chin turret. Now let's see if we have solved the tail sitting issue. And yes we did. The cockpit access doors are extremely tricky and fiddly to put in place. I employed some tape to help me hold the details in place well, I super glue them in place. Unfortunately, I did not have time to build a display base for this video. If you want to see such video, leave me a comment in the comment section. And with that, our Huey Cobra is complete. I don't know about you, but I did enjoy this build, although there were some issues here and there. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done that already. I also want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling fellas!